You guys have been wanting this one for quite a while and here I have all these eight core behemoths right here on the desk and on my head. So we've got the Ryzen 7 2700X at 4.2 gigahertz going up against the 9900K at five gigahertz. And then we're going back to 2013, taking that Xeon, which is the 1680V2, and we're clocking that to 4.6 gigahertz. And we're gonna be testing these three CPUs with the RTX 2080 Ti Aorus. Now I did set the fan speeds to 100%, up the power limits to 122%, and it's an even apples to apples to apples test. As for the motherboards, we've got the ASRock Taichi Ultimate across both the Ryzen and also the 9900K. As for the Xeon, that's got the Rampage 4 Extreme X79 motherboard. And what are we waiting for? Let's do this. That was the 8700K box, by the way. I was just gonna pretend it's a Xeon box, but it's not gonna be. Welcome back to Tech Yes City, and right here is part one of three with the ultimate showdown. The whole purpose of this, if you haven't guys seen already, I did a prelude where I talk about X79, is that we're looking at 2013 versus now 2018. We're gonna see how far tech has come in the last five years, at least for a single end power user or someone that plays games. In other words, I guess the majority of my audience and myself included. And so we've tested seven different games here at 1080p Ultra and also 1440p Ultra. This will be part one, we're looking at the gaming performance. And then in part two, we're gonna take a look at the input lag. And then in part three, we're gonna be taking a look at the productivity. So let's have a look. First up, pulling up CSGO for you guys. 1080p, we saw the 9900K coming out well ahead of the pack here. 558 average FPS, 1% low of 141. Contrast that to the 1680v2 that was getting 430 average FPS with a 1% low of 122. Then we look at the uh, Ryzen 7 2700X that was getting 358 FPS. So I think in CSGO, this was probably the weakest showing for the Ryzen CPU. Uh, but moving along now to Dota 2, and we saw here 211 FPS uh, with Vulkan. And this time you guys have been telling me, look, I want to see the Vulkan API tested in Dota 2. So I decided to switch things up and test Vulkan across the board here. And uh, 211 FPS, 98, 1% low versus 191 and 78 on the Xeon. And then going to rise in 162 and 61. Uh, so the Intel variants were pulling ahead of the Ryzen in this game and moving over to 1440p uh, showed a similar scenario with 151 on the Ryzen versus uh, 206 on the 9900K versus 184 on the Xeon 1680v2. Moving over to Far Cry 5, a game that still loves the single core performance as well as the higher clock speed. So it was a no surprise to see the uh, 9900K coming out at 1080p with 154 average FPS and a uh, minimum of 124. And then looking at the Xeon 1680 V2, it scored 116 with a minimum of 88. And the Ryzen 7 2700X at 4.2 gigahertz scored 107 uh, with a minimum of 83. And then stepping over to 1440p saw the FPS drop on the 9900K to 138, on the Xeon 113, and then on the Ryzen it scored 107 again. So pretty much plateauing out at that resolution. But one thing I will say with the RAM as well, memory, quick interlude here before we move on with more of the benchmarks. Uh, DDR4 memory, Sniper uh, X G skill at 3600 megahertz, a CL18, and then looking at the Xeon, that was using 1600 megahertz at CL8. So for the Xeons, I also used that in quad channel since it can support that. So that brought the total bandwidth of the memory, roughly that of the same of the 9900K and also the 2700X. Anyway, back to GTA 5 at 1080p, we had some engine busting performance here on the 9900K, scoring 167 with a 1% low of three. That's right, three. So this test, I decided to take off MSAA completely and just let the CPU run to the hill. Moving over to both the Ryzen and the Xeon, we scored very similar scores here, 133 uh, with a 1% low of 111 versus 132 on the Ryzen and 104. 
then stepping up to 1440p, the 9900K actually did better, uh, scoring 171 average FPS, but again, a 1% lower 4, so it was still a horrible experience. And then uh, the Xeon did 130, and the Ryzen did 126. So uh, both the, um, I guess, slower CPUs did do better in GTA 5 because they're not breaking the engine. And if you've got a 9900K and it's clocked to five gigahertz, you may wish to manually cap the frames to around 160 in this game in particular. I find after that, it really just starts uh, going crazy and breaking the engine. Move over now to the latest and greatest Battlefield 5. We've got 177 average FPS at 1080p with a 9900K with 1% low of 118 versus 168 on the Ryzen 7 2700X versus 165 on the Xeon. Uh, so the Xeon actually surprisingly got the highest 1% lows here. And this is actually a trend that I'm noticing through a lot of these benchmarks with the 1% lows. And uh, interestingly enough, the Xeon has 25 megabytes of level three cache on, did I just say cache? Cache on board this CPU. So stepping things up now to 1440p, saw the 9900K 136, the Ryzen 7 134, so really closing that gap, and then the Xeon scoring 128, um, and then the 1% lows were in tandem with the clock speeds in this particular benchmark from 5 gigahertz to 4.6 to 4.2. Moving across now to the latest reiteration of Hitman at 1080p, 242 average FPS, 9900K, and then moving across to the Xeon, we scored 201 FPS, and then the Ryzen 7 2700X, 191. And then stepping things up to 1440p on the Ryzen store, 182 average FPS, the Intel scoring 233, and then the Xeon scoring 192. All the 1% lows were really well controlled, very smooth experience in this game on all three CPUs. And now moving over to Assassin's Creed Origin, we're using the inbuilt benchmark, but I still use MSI Afterburner Overlay, where I can capture the 1% lows during this benchmark. And we saw here at 1080p on the ultra high settings. So this is the max the slider will go. With the 2080 Ti, we saw 112 average FPS at 1080p on the 9900K, 59, 1% low. Stepping across to the Xeon, that got 96 average FPS with a 1% low of 33. And then looking at the Ryzen 7 2700 x 84 with 41. Stepping things up to 1440p, we got 83 and 39 on the Ryzen. 100 and then 58 for the 1% lows on 9900K, and then for the 1680V2, 90 and 32 respectively. So this game pretty much scaled alongside those clock speed numbers, even though the IPC and the architectures are different. We had the five gigahertz coming out on top, 4.6 in second and 4.2 in third place. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen, there are the gaming results with the 1680V2 the 2013 Xeon at 4.6 gigahertz versus the Ryzen 7 2700X at 4.2 gigahertz and then the 9900K, the latest and greatest at five gigahertz. Uh, but the thing is, we'll look at the power consumption results and I'll probably show this in the other two part series as well. This is getting uh, over 200 watts usage when it's at five gigahertz. Uh, the idle power consumption is pretty good at like just under 40 watts. Uh, but the Xeon at 4.6 gigahertz, which is five years old, is using around 180 watts. And then the Ryzen's uh, close to around 140 watts. So when we look at what came out in 2013, and we fast forward now to 2018, not a whole lot has changed, at least for someone like me who plays games occasionally uh, with a CPU like this, or someone out there who's maybe looking for a bargain X79 motherboard. Don't be deterred from getting the X79 platform if you can get a really good deal on it. Or if you're an enthusiast and you wish to want to travel back to the future and get something that you can enjoy. Because what we saw in today's video was a 9900K that's pushed to the brink. And when we look at that out of the box, that's getting 4.7 gigahertz. You can only really get that thing realistically an extra 300 megahertz higher. The Xeon's coming out of the box with a three gigahertz base clock speed. We're taking that to 4.6 gigahertz. That's over a 50% overclock. Then we look at the Ryzen 7 2700X. That's pretty much boosting to four gigahertz out of the box automatically. So we're getting an extra 200 megahertz on that. So there's something that we can see here with these three CPUs. The one from 2013 had a lot of headroom. The two CPUs from both AMD and Intel in uh, 2018 are being pushed higher to the brink. I guarantee you, if you got this CPU and you got a really bad power supply, 
and you got a really bad or just a really entry level Z390 uh, motherboard and you tried running it, even out of the box, you might have problems, it might crash. You take that Xeon 1680 V2, you chuck it in with the crappest power supply money can buy, chuck it with the crappest X79, even a Wannan board, and I think that thing will boot and work at its base clock speeds. And that's a big difference between 2018 versus 2013 with these CPUs. I think the envelope is being pushed to the brink, and so we're not really seeing true gains. When we look at the 4.6 gigahertz CPU, it's beating the Ryzen in pretty much all those benchmarks, Battlefield 5 being the exception. And I believe maybe that has to do with some coding using FMA3, which is an instruction set that's not on the Ivy Bridge EP CPUs, the 2013 release. AVX is still there, and so a lot of the other titles are doing very well. Hitman included, that was beating out the Ryzen 7 2700X. Uh, but of course the 9900K is still coming out on top, it's got 5 GHz clock speeds and it's got a slightly better IPC than the 1680 V2. Uh, but really, when it comes down to it, in 5 years, I just, I'm surprised, not a whole lot has changed. And that's the shocking truth of what's going on here. And as we said in the previous video with the Prelude, if you haven't seen it already, I'll put the link up here. For what I use the 1680 V2 for, uh, I don't need all those extra features like the DMI 3.0, I don't need the... Uh, reduction in PCIe lanes from 40 to 20. <laughs> I also don't need USB 3.1, I don't need Thunderbolt 3, but what I do need is the best IPC, the fastest clock speeds, so I can get the snappiest experience known to man. But in this case, I think that snappiest experience could have been five years ago. And you're gonna find out in part two of this video where we're gonna be testing the input latency with the 1000 FPS camera. And one thing I will state is that we did try to keep this as apples to apples as possible. So we used the same monitor, the ASUS uh, XG35. We used the same SSDs. Uh, we did use a better power supply on the Ryzen and also the 9900K machines, the AX1500. And we did use 3600 megahertz uh, G-Skill memory. And I slightly tuned that to tighten the timings up just ever so slightly. The 1680 V2, we're using real just run of the mill Corsair 1600 megahertz memory. And of course I've tuned that down a little bit from CL10 to CL8. And that of course is one of the many benefits of X79, even in 2018. Anyway, there it is. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed part one of three of the Epic X79 showdown versus the latest and greatest in 2018 from AMD, from Intel. And I'm pretty shocked at how well this CPU did. It beat out the Ryzen 7 2700X with its really good memory and its 4.2 GHz overclock. And uh, of course the 9900K, that's using more power. So it's really crazy how far tech kind of hasn't come in five years. But anyway, love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. Drop a comment in the comment section below. And also Steve, if you're watching this, don't have the viewers believe otherwise. Unless, of course, you want to get X79 for yourself and that 1680 V2 and run it at 4.6 gigahertz. And I'll catch you in the next one very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.